Hello humans. If you look at the date of the last Learning to Fly episode in this one, you'll see a huge gap. That's because I didn't know how to make this episode. The main problem is that now we are getting so big and moving so fast in order to illustrate everything, everything is starting to seem small. If you followed each episode in succession, you might have escaped that effect, but I don't think I can push it anymore. To do this episode, where we're trying to tackle the size of the universe itself, something new and fresh is needed, and I think I may or may not have it, but I'm going to try. But before then, let's get into some of the numbers and science. Firstly, it is quite well known these days that the age of the universe appears to be about 13.8 billion years old. This puts what we can observe as the edge of the universe at 13.8 billion light years away, as the light that is currently reaching our eyes from there has been travelling at the speed of light for 13.8 billion years. There are three caveats though. The first is that when we look further out, we are looking back in time. Just like when we look at Sirius at 8 light years away, we are seeing, as Randall Monroe put it in XKCD, light emitted from Sirius during the previous presidential administration. When we tried to look at light from 13.8 billion light years away, it was emitted during the universe's previous cosmic epoch, the photon epoch, as I will get to in another video. And so we don't see anything we recognise, just photons really. But that's not the important caveat here. The important caveat is that the stuff, whatever stuff, we are looking at, has moved since it emitted the light that is reaching our eyes now. It has moved because the universe is expanding. Space itself is expanding in such a way that the further away you go from a point, the faster the space is moving away from that point. The edge of the visible universe is the farthest point we can see, and anything there is moving away from us faster than the speed of light. This is possible because it is space that is quote-unquote moving, not the matter that moves along with it. Matter moves through space, space moves through... Well, that's a deep question for another video. Where that stuff is now is much further away than 13.8 billion light years. It has been moving away from us for 13.8 billion years, while that light that is just reaching us now has been in transit. Scientists estimate that the edge of the observable universe is actually 46.5 billion light years now, making the radius of the observable universe 93 billion light years. If you've been following this, you may have come across the inevitable realisation that the edge of the invisible universe is shrinking as stuff passes beyond the visible edge, which would actually be quite sad, even tragic, if we lived with the billions of years it would take to actually notice this. But that realisation brings us to the last caveat. All we've been talking about is the size of the observable universe, but how big it really is is completely unknown. The universe has been expanding since day one, and it's highly likely that there is some stuff, stars, galaxies, structures, whatever, that were always swept away from us by the expanding universe at faster than the speed of light, and the light from there never did or will reach us. How big is the universe? I don't know. Nobody does. It could be endless, it could be finite. I personally like to imagine it being finite. I think that that is more elegant, even optimistic. If it is finite, and not any bigger than 300 billion light years in diameter, it will still have a mathematically definable level of greatness to it, that gets lost when bigger than that figure. The universe's structure on the larger scales we know of are long filaments and lumps of galaxies, strands that crisscross the heavens. If we were to zoom out to the point where we could see 300 billion light years in a sweep of the structure, it would appear, in a mathematically rigorous way, to be homogeneous, isotropized, samey and this has been referred to as the end of greatness. Anyway, in true learning to fly fashion, it's time to visualise these figures, get a grip of them mentally in some way, and feel the awe. This time though, there won't really be any numbers, so put everything I just spoke about out of your mind. In order to do this, we're going to need to start in our imaginations, so please close your eyes. I want you to picture something. It needs to be the largest day-to-day -day place you've been to. Somewhere that's big, but within your limits to visualise in its entirety. I'm going to call it our big box. As a suggestion, think perhaps of your local swimming pool, the big room it is in, or your school's gymnasium. You are standing in this room right now, looking around at the edges that define its space. It's big, about as big a thing as you can picture in your mind well. You can walk along the wall or down the centre from one end to the other. Walk from one end to the other now. It takes a minute maybe. You can see every single step as you take it and get a feel for the vastness of it. You look up at the ceiling. It's a very high ceiling. 
This room has a distinctive echo like rooms only this big do. If a rope came down from the ceiling, you can imagine climbing to the top. Climb to the top. It didn't take too long, but you are really high. It's a truly huge room. This is your big box. Now use that amazing tool that is your imagination to let the walls of the big box melt. Try to remember where they are, but you aren't indoors anymore. You're standing on a mountain. There is grass at your feet, you are surrounded by trees, and you have a wonderful view in front of you. Look around, see the mountain, see the world, but don't try to visualize the vastness of it, you can't. Now picture a volume of space around you that is your big box. Hold on to that and everything we are about to do, as that is the big place you can feel. That is real, and it's going to ground you every time I stop and reflect on what we've just seen. You just walked through it, climbed it, and you can comprehend it without even the slightest effort. That box is surrounding you invisibly on this mountain right now. Now open your eyes. This is the mountain. That box is still around you. I'm launching you up into space now. As I look down now, as the ground is getting further away, and the vastness of the world makes itself truly known, don't forget about the box. Wherever we go, hold on to it. Because to you it is real, and therefore every place we are headed to now is real too. We have left the atmosphere and are now looking down at the earth from space. I'm going to stop here and look around. You're still inside your box. If you move around your box now, nothing changes. The background is fixed because it is so far away. That huge box has already become insignificant, but try still to hold on to it because it makes all of this real, and it is still significant to you. Moving away from the Earth now, watching it get smaller and smaller, the universe's size hasn't even remotely begun to reveal itself, and it's already incomprehensibly huge. I'll turn on the orbit lines and we can watch the solar system come into view and begin to shrink itself. But let's not lose the box. Here I will stop and again make a mental exercise of superimposing your 3D big box around you while you look down at the endless, vast chasm between us and the solar system below. Feel the fear of falling down into it, a drop unlike anything you can imagine. Time to get to a larger scale now, so hold on to your human hands. I'm going to take you out to the stars like we've seen before. Remember what you learned about the scale at this level, as we go out and start to see the stars shift position as we begin to pass them. I'll stop our outward journey and begin to rotate around the sun now, but at this distance. You can see the local hundred or so stars around our sun. I'm stopping now. You are utterly lost among the stars. That big space within the imaginary box around you is just a tiny speck, part of much more space, endless, endless space. The sun is way out there, somewhere amongst those stars. Let's get moving before our bones chill completely, out further, into the vast pool of stars that our sun swims through in the galaxy. If I rotate around the sun now, slowly, you can see thousands, millions of stars, part of just one tiny part of our galaxy as you can see coming into view. We are taking another pit stop at a place that maybe some stray stars from our galaxy can be found, or perhaps some small trails of small dwarf galaxies that orbited our galaxy for billions of years, getting ripped apart by the gravity. We came out this far in a previous episode concretizing it, what we're doing now, and concretizing it with our mental box. Take a look around and see how big the galaxy is. Breathtaking. We aren't even close to the end of our journey yet. The universe is huge. Here comes the local group from the last episode. If I suddenly stop here, your box is now completely hopelessly lost in a vast space. The chances of running into anything out here are vanishing to zero. If there was a sun right next to us, the same as our own, its light wouldn't reach Earth in a way that we could ever hope to detect without the longest exposures with the most powerful telescopes. But finding it would make the analogy of finding a needle in a haystack seem as easy as finding the Earth when you are standing on it. Moving out now, our galaxy does what Earth did. It shrinks away into the distance. Then the local group itself disappears, and we bring into focus the thousands and now millions of galaxies with their clusters. The Virgo supercluster comes into view, and even the Laniakea supercluster. Rotating around it, we can see how huge a swath, an ocean really, of galaxies there are, on the same scales as our galaxy. Don't be misled by the speed we were at, and think that we were getting larger. I've stopped now, and you are free to move around in your box again. All this you can see before you is so hopelessly far away, but it's there, 
Right in front of you, you were looking across hundreds of millions of light years in a sweep. Further out still, and now we are moving through the filaments and strands of the galaxies at monumental speeds. Your box is coming with you. These strands of so many galaxies are moving past at rates you can see, so you can follow just about what we are doing. I'm going to stop here, several billion light years away from our galaxy, in a big cosmic void. You're back in your box now. Nothing you see here is any different from before, but we are so very much further away, and now we are in a void right in the middle of several strands of galaxies. We can't make out their structure because we've stopped and we are just floating around now. Let me tell you, those galaxies are hugely overbrightened. You are so endlessly distant from them, you would not even be able to see them here. You just see an absolute terrifying darkness, a bit like this. You are in space right now, the vast, vast cosmos, but you are utterly unfindable. You are lost in the most absolute sense. Don't worry, back to what we are doing. I'm taking us now all the way to the apparent edge of the visible universe, to a distance of 13.8 billion light years. Watch it all pass by, see it. You are seeing a perfect simulation of what's really there. Passing by all these billions upon billions of galaxies. We are now about to reach 13.8 billion light years from home, which is somewhere far away there. Let's revolve around it and get a feel, if we can, of just how endless and spectacular the jewels of the cosmos are. The deep, deep ocean of light and stars, planets and life that are suspended in the heavens. We could go on further, six or seven times further, before we get to the actual limit of what we can observe, but stop. You are now back in your chair, in your room, watching your screen. Take your eyes off the screen and get back to reality. Look up. Up there, all of what you just saw actually exists. It's all suspended, hanging above you. Take this feeling away with you, store it away for the rest of your life, and never look up at the stars quite the same way again. The universe exists, it is real, it's all around you, and its vastness can make your heart truly skip a beat any time you want to feel a true sense of wonder and meaning. So long, humans. <laughs>